I may be known by some as Dr. Cheesy, or I'm also known among my peers as Professor Quack. But today we're going to be using a line number reader, and we're going to do some Java. Okay, we're going to create a new NetBeans project, and we're going to look at some basic I.O. operations, or input and output. And I'm going to create a new NetBeans project. And I'll just say Java application. I'm going to call this one I.O. And it'll write some code for us. And I'm just going to very quickly refactor this project again. In a larger project, um, it would be useful to use packaging and subdirectories. But in this small example, we'll commit a little bit of a faux pas. And we'll just use the default package and we'll just call this what it is, just sort of an I.O. example. Okay. And we'll pull these tags out and just add in some comment tags here. And the very first thing that we want to do kind of clean this out here. Let's take a, a look at how to get some input and output in Java and how to use some variables. We talked about variables and how memory is stored. Um, and it's time to use another keyword here, but one of the very first things I'm going to want to do is take input from the console and output. In this example, we're going to ask uh, the player for their name and their score and their accuracy rating. So we'll look at using three different data types. And to get the input, we'll try two different methods. We'll use a JOption pane, and there's an input dialog and a message dialog. We can call from that, and we'll also use a line number reader to get it from the console. To use the line number reader, I just want to import the package Java IO, and I'll use the asterisk or wildcard here. And when I use this keyword import, basically I'm taking an entire class or object in Java and importing its methods and objects, um, you know, any subclasses that derive from it. So I, I need to get at those, or I want to make use of something called a line number reader. Okay, and up here, I could do it local to the function, but I'm going to make a global section. And remember that we talked about scope in the last lesson. You can have global scope or local scope. And Local would be inside the function, global would be inside the class, but outside the other functions. And I could create my variables in either location, but for now, let's say I'm going to go ahead and make these globals. And later, if I choose to pass them around or use them in other functions, I can freely. So first off, I'd like to um, you know, get input from the console. And if I want to do that, I can use something called a line number reader and I'll simply call this n. And the syntax for this is a line number reader takes an input stream reader as its argument, and an input stream reader takes system n as its argument. So I want to build a new line number reader and I'll just call it n in this example. And that I'll use that later to do some input. And we want to get three pieces of information. So first off, the player's name. And what data type, what primitive would be appropriate for that? Character can store a single character, but that would be too small. We need to store an entire name, not just a single letter. Um, integer, double float, again, those would not apply because they're for storing numerical values. So based on the kind of data we want to store, there's really only one valid data primitive we can use. And that's an object from the string class. So I'm just going to make a string here and call it full name. And we'll give it an initial value in Java. But we'll want to change that or modify that later. Um, the next piece of information that we want to get is their score. And that would be a whole number value in most games. So we could just use an integer and we could call it score. 
and we'll give it an uppercase we'll F there in the name an initial value of zero and then the last piece of information we wanted to get was their accuracy rating and their accuracy rating could be a decimal point or possibly a large value so we'll just initialize that there to zero point zero so I've created the objects that I'm going to need for basic input and output and also to store the player's name, their score, and their accuracy rating. And I want to make sure I've selected the right data types, you know, in terms of being able to use these. So what's the very first thing I would like to do? Remember from our first program, we used system out print to display something to the console. We talked about escape sequences, how backslash n would simply add a line or a space and backslash t would tab it over so um, so here we'll just ask the player to enter their name and we've done that and now we want to take some of this as input and to handle the input we'll use our line number reader but a line number reader um, you know, it's a basic I.O. operation, and any time we're doing input and output, or I.O., we should use something called try and catch blocks. And in this case, there are exceptions. We'll go into greater detail with try and catch later. But for now, just know that, you know, when we do I.O., we need to catch exceptions. And first, I'm just going to make the the catch statement here. In this case, if something goes wrong, <coughs> it'll simply display IO error. We'll display that or print that in the console. But in the try here, here's where I actually want to do my IO operation, and I've asked the player to enter their name. So I need to take it as input. And this is what I can do. I have the string here to store it in. So on the left side of the assignment operator, I want to say full name and assign to it the value of I want to take my line number reader in the dot operator and I want to call a function called read line okay so I'm trying this and if something goes wrong I'm catching it here and I'm catching an IO exception every try must have a catch and every IO operation should be enclosed in try and catch there's a lot more to try and catch and we'll cover that in greater detail later. But for now, just so we can get some input from the console and display some output, we'll just use it and we'll sort of practice data hiding. Just like we can drive a car and get from point A to point B without knowing how to build a car, we'll use a line number reader, but without completely picking it apart and going over all of its constituent parts. We will go into this later, I promise. So for now, we've taken our input and then What's the next thing we want to get? Their score. So as a widget, we can pretty much do the same process that we did here. Ask the question, take the answer. So again, double quotes and a string literal. Let's ask the player what their score is. And we want to do the same thing with our try and our catch, except that this time we don't want to store the variable in name, we want to store it in this integer here for their score. Now there's a problem with this, and that is a line number reader always returns to us a string. Alright, it's one data type, but the problem is we want to store score in an integer, a different data type and I can't do that without an explicit conversion okay and there are built-in functions in Java to do that but let's see what would happen if I simply tried to do this and then compile it 